What's going on guys? In this video, we're going to build a GraphQL client with React and we are going to perform GraphQL queries using Axios and React hooks. Remember to subscribe to the channel and please leave a comment below with the front-end framework or library you are currently using in your projects. And now let's get started. Okay, let's get started by creating a new React application. npx create React app and the name of the app will be React GraphQL. Okay. Now let's enter to the project folder. And now we're going to install Axios to perform the HTTP requests to our GraphQL server. We're going to use the Nest.js GraphQL API we built on previous videos. I'm going to put the link here. So npm install dash dash save. Axios. Okay, and now let's open Visual Studio Code. Okay, before writing any code in our React client, I'm going to run the Nest.js server with our GraphQL API. So here we have our schema that includes videos, users, we have queries, basically we have this query to get the list of existing videos. So I'm going to run the server and it's going to listen on port 8080. Okay, and now let's move on to our React project. Here we have the initial structure of the project. Here we're gonna have our app. We're going to create our main component here. So let's work on the HTML of the component first. Here we're going to use an H1. where we are going to show the list of videos. And within this component, we're going to render a list of videos. We're going to use a list for that. So I'm going to put the initial structure of the list. I'm going to remove this. We're not going to use it. And here we're going to use the use state hook and the use effect hook. A hook in React is basically a way to access React components state and lifecycle from a function component. The use state hook is going to return the current state of the component and the function that will let us update that value. And using the use effect hook, will allow us to call the GraphQL API once the DOM or document object model of the component is completely rendered. And here we are going to call the useState function where we're going to get two values, the current state of the component and the function to change that state. So we're going to create a constant and we're going to re receive the current state and the function to change that state. And this equals to use a state, and we're going to initialize the state that is going to be an empty array of videos. And now we are going to call the use effect hook to fetch the data from the GraphQL API once the DOM is completely rendered. And this hook is going to receive a function that we're going to pass as an arrow function. And here we have to call the GraphQL API. And update the component state with that result. Okay, before writing any code here, I'm going to create a new file with a couple of constants. Constants. One of them will be the GraphQL endpoint.
this is localhost 8080 slash GraphQL. And another constant will be the query to get the list of existing videos. Get videos query. And I'm going to paste the query here. Basically, I'm getting the list of videos, including the ID of the video, the title and the URL, and also the ID and the name of the author of that video. I need to export these constants. And now I'm going to import those constants here. Okay, so in order to call the GraphQL API and update the component state with the response, I'm going to create a function here. Fetch data. And this will be an arrow function. Okay, and in order to call the GraphQL API, I'm going to use Axios, so I'm going to import it. Import Axios from Axios. Here I'm going to create a constant with the result of the query. Query result. And here I'm going to call the Axios API. Axios that post. And here I'm going to pass the endpoint constants that GraphQL API. And here I need to pass the query. Query constants dot get videos query like this. And here, this needs to be async, like that. And from that query result, we need to extract the data. So I'm going to create a constant result. And here we access to the list of videos using query result. That data, this is the way that we can access data from an Axios response, and then data again. This is the root element that we receive from the GraphQL API, as we can see here. If we run this query, yeah, as we can see, data is the root element of that collection, which is why we need to add data here. This is Axios, and the last data element is from the GraphQL API. And after this, we need to call this function, setData, to update the current state of the component. So this is setData. And we pass the list of videos, videos. And this is result, that video. And we need to actually call this function here, fetch data. OK, now that we got the list of existing videos from the GraphQL API, we're going to iterate over the collection of elements, and we're going to use the map function to render each item. So here we need to add data dot videos and we call the map function to render each item. So this is, will be an arrow function. And for each item, we're going to use a list element, the key 
of each of these list elements will be the ID of the item, item dot ID. And here I'm going to create a component that will be a video component. So I'm going to create a new folder, component, and we're going to create a new file for the video component, video.js. I'm going to import React. from React and I'm going to create a function component video and I'm going to pass the props to render the item that I'm going to receive as part of these properties so this is going to return a div and within this div I'm going to add a link with the URL that I'm going to receive as part of the item. So this is props.item.item.url. And here I'm going to put the title of the video. Props item dot title and here I'm going to add the author of the video this is props that item dot author dot name and I need to export this function component export default video okay let's go back to the main component and here we're going to import the video video and we're going to pass the item item equals item and that's pretty much it so if we go to the playground and we create a couple of videos video one video two here we get the list of videos and if we run our app npm start and as we can see here we get the list of videos so if we create a new video, let's say video three, now we get also this video here. That's all I have for today. Thank you guys for watching and I see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.